It was September 2019. I was driving home with work, and so much work was on my mind. And at the time, I was in an accelerated master's program at an Ivy League. I was also crisscrossing the country, going from state to state as a lobbyist for a global brand. I was trading time like it was currency and stealing it from myself. I was everything to everyone else and nothing to myself. I was on several nonprofit boards. And wait, I was also finishing my book as it was time for the deadline and it was ready to get it to the publisher. Yet, I would call home every day after work and I would tell my mom how the day went and begin to process that very day. Oftentimes, it was the first time I slowed down. And on this particular day, I told my mom something that alarmed her. I was hearing crashing sounds, but not to worry. I made a deal with God. I asked him to keep me safe until after graduation in May, and then I would slow down. You made a deal with who? You made a deal with God? My mom was livid and likely clutching her rosary beads. <laughs> but then she told me something that your mother or aunt might have told you. It's not on your time. It's on his time. Weeks later, I was in Washington, D.C. at yet another lobbying reception. And it was incredible. I was in the VIP section, y'all. There were love seats, champagne flutes, and even my favorite dessert. But something was off. There was a man that was shuffling things all around. No, like literally, he was moving cushions, moving chairs. He was looking for his mobile phone. And then I know, I only know, because a friend later told me, he lift up a love seat and it slipped out his hand and landed on my head. Literally a love seat as in a piece of furniture landed on my head. The next thing I know, I find myself in the ER and a doctor is there telling me I have a major concussion. Did I say it was Friday the 13th? <laughs> the doctor said I'd be out of work for a while. I thought it would be days. He said it would be weeks. It turned out to be months. And in the greatest irony of all ironies, I find myself at home sitting on my own sofa in the center of the sofa, trying to find the center of my life. And I realized that my life was anything from centered. I was spinning on a hamster wheel. No, actually, I was the hamster wheel. Going from one meeting to the next, one airport to the next, to one crash and another. And you guys might be familiar with this because in March of 2020, you likely found yourself at home on your very own sofa. But for me, I was already on my sofa for months. I was an early adopter when it came to pandemic living. I told y'all I was an overachiever. But so while I was there, I realized something. Now everybody else was just walking outside for the first time. All the news reports said the world had changed. Even things on the television. It said there's a great reset. The world would never be the same. For me, it was different. I was different. I would never see the world the same because I just discovered what I call the great me set. Now, what is the great me set? It is a way that you might view your life. It's how you determine what you value so that what you value has the most value on your schedule. Now, it's not self-care. It's not a mani or pedi or a massage or a round of golf with your buddies. A me set is resetting the calendar 
So the things that you believe the most in are there first. With the MESET, you revise the rules, and they are realigned with your life's values, the legacy that you want to leave behind. Hiking with your significant other, not a MESET. Time with your friends might bring you joy. It might even fill your heart, but it actually doesn't charge your inner battery. Now, the secret to the me set is the me. It is really what you need. I know it might feel selfish, and it might even make you uncomfortable, but don't worry. A me set moment will increase your awareness so that you truly understand what you need, and you'll never become all those things that you desperately want to avoid. With the me set, you will be all that you need. Now, before my me set, I was so busy I was so distracted that I kept filling my schedule with to-do items. To do a wax, to do a meditation, to do a massage. But truly, I didn't need more to-do items. I need more how-to-be items. A MESET truly allows you to honor your time. And by returning to a place that feels like home inside, you actually realize that more doesn't mean more. You can't pour from an empty cup. We all know that, right? But we must refill ourselves. We must fill more inside before we can share our we with the collective we. Now, if you're an overachiever like me, you truly might be looking for more to do. But I'm not going to give you that to-do list. You might be looking for an affirmation to start your day or a quote to post on that Facebook wall. Maybe even a course. A course for four easy installments of $9.99 each. You don't need any of that. Everything you need is already inside of you. You came today with it in this very auditorium. All you need is to be quiet. I don't want you to expect it to come crashing down, right? You really don't want it to come crashing down. But you will hear a whisper. Recently, I was at Martha's Vineyard for a policy conference, and it was an agenda that was overly ambitious. The day would start early in the morning at 7 and end well after midnight. I was exhausted. Everyone says you go to the vineyard to recharge, and I just wanted to recharge. I needed to reset my me set. And I truly want you to understand that a me set is an ongoing commitment with self. I kept staring out at the ocean, just wanting to go outside and put my toes in the sand, but it never came. Now on the final day, I left to go to the airport early, two hours early, because hey, I'm <laughs> still an overachiever. Being that it was a very small airport, I thought everyone would get there at the same time, and the line would be so long. I arrived, and no one, no one was there. Now, I know you're thinking, this is the time that I was craving to be, be alone, but this was not what I had in mind. And so I stand there, trying to figure out what's going on, and go to the, the front line, and I learn that my flight is canceled, and the next one isn't until the next day. My heart sank, and that's when I saw him, a guy I used to date. <laughs> Key word being used to. So why is it when your flight is canceled, you're at the airport early in the morning without makeup because it's a super early flight, and you're trying to figure out what to do next, and your past appears in front of you, your past choices? your past decisions, your past sacrifices, and mistakes. For me, it was a stark reminder of all the times I didn't choose me, that I didn't make the decisions that were best for me. So I gather my things, and I'm off to Boston by way of a ferry. I sat on the ferry, looking out the window. The waves were beautiful. I even took a picture for Facebook. And I realized, this is a me set. This is the moment that I've been wanting those four days on the vineyard. So I make it to the other side, 
And I begin to ask, how do I catch an Uber? No, really, how do I get the bus? Just how do I get to the city? And the first person tells me, there's no way you're catching an Uber, there's a race. I didn't quite understand. Because I'm a woman of faith, and where there is a will, there is a way. There was no one that was gonna tell me I couldn't make my way out of that parking lot. So I found another helper, someone that I asked, how do I get out of here? And she tells me, there's a traffic jam. No one would get out of there for an hour or two. It was the Falmouth 2020 10K. The only place I could catch a cab was probably up a hill just a mile or two. So there I was in my cutest travel outfit, white Reeboks, designer jeans, a button-down shirt, and a pink and green cashmere sweater that said vineyard, a side pony, and an overweight carry-on suitcase. So I did what every overachiever would do. I began walking, opened Google Maps, and hiked up a hill. After a few minutes, I realized there were people on both sides of me. They were running a 10K. <laughs> and then I heard, hey, aren't you an overachiever carrying a suitcase on this 10K? There that word was again, the overachiever. By the time I got to Boston, I was tired. I was sweaty. I was exhausted. As we all say, I was done. But I realized that I already knew what to do. It was inside of me. It was time for a me set moment. First, I became aware of what was going on. That's the first step in a me set. You have to understand what is going on. Take a moment to step out the chaos and press pause. Then you have to truly begin to take action. That's the second part of a me step. Even little actions matter. Now, I only had six hours in Boston, but I was determined to make the most of it. So I decided to splurge on the airline points and the hotel points that I'd been hoarding, and I got a fancy hotel room, put my things down, and made my way out into the city for a fancy lunch. So I'd already splurged on hotel points. I decided to also splurge on calories. I had a little pizza and some wine, and I put my phone down. And then I decided to buy earrings. Now it wasn't retail therapy. It was my own version of a medal, just on my ears instead of my neck. It was a medal for running a 10K with a suitcase. <laughs> now I might not have been able to control the chaos around me, but I could control the actions that I took to really get out of that chaos. With my room came past a rooftop pool where I had chocolate cake and champagne and I put my toes in that water. I finally found water at the hotel pool. You can do a me set anywhere. And then I picked up my phone. Okay, I know you're thinking, I finally picked up the phone. <laughs> I had to do the third step of the me set. I had to schedule the next me step. So many of us get so caught up in doing the first two parts you know, becoming aware and then taking action, that we forget we have to continue the work. We don't take time to do the next me set while in the current me set. And that's truly what we need to do. There's always gonna be another email, another meeting, another obligation, text message, or my favorite, a to-do. But there won't be another me set unless you place it on your calendar. Time for you to be alone, to be nurtured, by yourself, so that you can be the fullest version of yourself. Take moments to go alone. Maybe go on a vacation alone, or even to see a movie. No significant others, no family or friends, just you and a little me set time on your own. And then you have to keep doing it. Now I say this because I'm saying it for myself. So the months leading up to this talk, I was so busy. Weeks leading up to this talk, things got more busy. I couldn't quite seem to find the time to carve out, to write, to 
to practice, but most importantly, to rest. So this is truly a letter to myself and a proclamation for both you and me. For my 40th birthday, my partner did something so incredible. He took me to London. It was the best birthday trip. He planned tea time, fit for a queen. All the tourist activities, all of the things to do. It wasn't what I truly wanted. I was craving a beach. I always longed for my toes in sand. I wanted a little time for just me. It wasn't the stillness that I craved. But why do we settle when others do incredibly generous and nice things for us? When they give us something, but yet it's not in alignment with our life or what we really need. It's okay to say what that vision is for a me set and do it with grace and love. I wanted the beach. I wanted my toes in sand. I wanted me. So this year for my birthday, I scheduled time for me at the beach. It was a me set. My first solo vacation. And let me tell you, when I left, I was dubbing it a soul occasion. That is everything that comes with the me set. And so you have to continue to do the work. So if you find yourself in a space where you are climbing the corporate ladder and you're questioning, is your day-to-day -day work simply a task? Because work doesn't feel like it's in alignment with your life or the legacy that you want to leave. It might be time for a reset. Or if you find yourself shuffling through the dishwasher and just putting dishes away, it might be time for you simply to be present at home. It might be time for a reset. Hey, God, want to make a deal? Not this time. I'm going to choose to listen to the whisper within. Choose to become aware of the chaos around me. Choose to take action little by little and schedule another me set. And I hope you will too, instead of getting on that hamster wheel or the Ferris wheel that we call life, of finding yourself on a 10K with a rolling piece of luggage. I hope that you join me on this new perspective of life, this new way of thinking, this new way of using what's already inside of us and what we've all been called to do. This journey called the Great Me Set. <laughs>